Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Parameters add a level of flexibility to your reports. Many times you have values that you would like to specify at runtime in a report. A parameter field allows you to specify a value that will be used by the report when the report data is refreshed. Parameters can serve multiple purposes in reports and are one of the most powerful tools that you have to allow for additional flexibility within a report. You can use parameters to filter report data at runtime, selecting which records to display and calculate on the fly. You could also have a parameter prompt you to enter a value, which can then be used by a formula in the report, for example. You create the parameter fields in the Field Explorer pane just as you create many other types of fields. You do have a few considerations to bear in mind as you create the parameter fields for use in your reports. First off, parameter fields that will be used by report group or record selection formulas do not need to have the parameter field placed into the actual report. Simply create the parameter field and then reference it as needed within the selection formula. Also, you can create parameters that will accept string, number, currency, boolean, date, time, or date time values for use in the report. To create a new parameter field, select the Parameter Fields option in the Field Explorer pane and then click the New button in the toolbar at the top of the pane. This will launch the Create New Parameter dialog box where you can specify the settings for the parameter field. The name and type, which appear at the top of the dialog box, are the only two required arguments in this dialog box. You can optionally specify the other values as needed. In the Create New Parameter dialog box, you can type the name of the parameter field that you want to create into the Name text box. It can be up to 255 characters in length, but it should be short, descriptive, and easy to reference. You can then use the Type drop-down to select the data type of the parameter. In the List of Values area, you can create a list of preset values from which the user can select the desired value for use in the parameter when refreshing the report data. You can select either the Static option or the Dynamic option. Note that your choice changes what fields are available in the dialog box. If you select Static, then you are presenting the user with choices that always contain the same values, and this is used for possible parameter choices that do not change very frequently. If you choose Dynamic, then you create a list of possible parameter choices that can be updated as needed. In addition, you can create cascading choices in the Dynamic Parameter Prompts. This allows you to make the user select from multiple fields to specify an exact value. For example, you could use both the City and State fields in a Dynamic Prompt to prevent confusion about which city is being referred to when one is selected. For example, using a cascading prompt, you could make the user choose Grand Rapids and then Michigan versus Grand Rapids and Minnesota. In a static prompt, you would simply see the city of Grand Rapids shown twice in the list without any idea which value was associated with which state. If you select the static option, then you can provide a list of values from a database field from which the user can choose by selecting the name of the desired database field from the value field dropdown. You can use the Description field drop-down to choose a database field which describes the contents of the value field choice if needed. For example, if you selected a Customer ID value field, you could then use the Description field drop-down to choose Customer Name, so that the user could see the name versus the number when selecting a parameter value. If you wish to manually type a list of values, and optionally their descriptions, then you can either click into the first row of the value column to begin entering the parameter values, or you could just click the Insert button to append a new entry to the list of values. In the value list, you can click into any entry made, and then just click the Delete button, which looks like a black X, to delete the selected entry. You can also click the Move Up and Move Down arrows, which appear next to the Delete choice, to move the selected choice up or down through a list of values. You can use the Actions drop-down 
to perform various commands on the value list shown. If you selected to use a database field value from the value field dropdown, then you must select the append all database values command to load the values from the selected fields into the value list. You can select the clear command to remove all the list values shown. You can also import a delimited list of values from a text file by clicking the import command choice. This launches a separate dialog box which you can use to browse for and open the desired delimited text file. Also, you can select the export command to export a manual list into a delimited text file using the save as dialog box. Now if you chose dynamic in the list of values section, then you have different choices to make in this section. If you have a cascading parameter choice, meaning it uses multiple fields, then type whatever you would like to have displayed as the prompting text for the cascading parameter into the prompt group text text box. You can use this with single field prompts as well, but the title shows up at the top of the entire parameter dialog box prompt and not over the individual fields. To create a new list of field values from which the user can select, ensure that the new choice is selected in the Choose a Data Source section. You can then select from the list of fields in the current data source by using the Insert button or by clicking into the first empty row in the value column. Note that you can select any field entered into the list and then click the up and down arrows to move them up and down through the list. You can also click on any one of the list entries and click the delete button to delete that choice. Note that if you would like to use a secondary field for the description of the first or primary field selected in the value column, then you can choose a field that would serve that purpose from the description column. In the parameter column, you can click on a value to unbind it from the parameter if necessary or you can click on it to bind an unbound parameter value. Once you've set your value list, you can then set the desired options for each value in the options area below. The choices from which you can select change depending on whether or not you selected static or dynamic field values. For all static values that are not boolean or logical values, then you can set the following parameter options by clicking into the setting column and entering or changing the value shown. In the prompt text box, you can enter the text that you would like to appear as the parameters prompt. You can choose true or false from the prompt with description only option to only allow the description field choices to be viewed in the parameter prompt, which is true, or show both the value and description fields, which is false. You can enter a default parameter value to use and the default value option. If you select true in the allow custom values option, then the user can type in their own values in addition to selecting from a value list. If it's set to false, then they must only choose from the values shown within the list. If the allow multiple values option is set to true, then the parameter prompt will allow multiple values to be selected. This also enables you to set both the allow discrete values and allow range value options to true as well. Normally you could only select one of those two options. You can set the allow discrete values option to true to only allow singular parameter values to be selected. Although there can be multiple singular values, this means that there are no ranged parameter values, such as all values from $100 through $1,000. You can set the allow range values option to true to allow ranged parameter value choices, and you can use the min length option to enter the minimum number of characters that can appear as a value entry, and you can enter the max length number of characters that could possibly appear as a value entry. You can also use the edit mask option to enter a field mask that would restrict the possible range of characters that your users could input if desired. 
Now when stat setting static Boolean parameter values, you can set the prompt text, prompt with description only, and default value options as normal. You can also enter in the Boolean group number option to set the number of the group to which you wish to add the selected Boolean value. Boolean groups are created when Crystal Reports requires users to enter a prompt value, and Boolean groups can contain many Boolean parameter fields. When a user selects a group of Boolean values, they can set the same values or different values for each parameter within the group. You can use the exclusive group option to set this behavior. If this option is set to true, users can only select a single true Boolean value from the Boolean options presented within the group. If it is set to false, then the users can set multiple options in the group to true. If you selected a dynamic set of values, then you can set the prompt text, prompt with description only, allow multiple values, allow discrete values, and allow range value options as normal. In addition, you can use the sort order option to select how to sort the field's data values in the parameter prompt. The values can be sorted in either ascending or descending order by value or description. Once you've set the desired parameter options, just click OK in the parameter box at the bottom to create the new parameter field. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.